Hello, my amazing first grade artist. Today we're gonna to be starting a new project. We're gonna be doing something called paper weaving. So we're gonna make some painted paper and I'm gonna show you how to weave it together. So teachers, before you start this lesson, I want you to look up the YouTube video of Wild Roses Weaving. It's a um, story that's read aloud and let the children watch that. And um, it shows, it just talks about weaving. And so weaving isn't just with paper. We think of weaving really with fabric and that's how uh, it started a long, long time ago. And so that's how our clothing is made by weaving. I'm wearing a sweater today and these are pieces of thread or yarn that are woven together and it makes my sweater. And so we're gonna be doing it with paper. It'll be a little bit different, but it's kind of the same concept. So before we start, I wanted to show you some examples of some artistic paper weaving. And these are on a wall hanging, and artists did these, or so they're beautiful with the bright colors. And I want you to see how they're framed, and that's how we prepare art to hang on a wall. Your parents may have pictures on the wall at your house of, um, that are framed and hanging like this, and that's how we prepare it for our homes, for art museums and galleries. And we do this also for our art show. So we'll have an art show in the spring and we will put frames around the art. And so if you work really hard, you may get a piece of art in the art show too. So to begin with, everybody is going to get a piece of watercolor paper. We're gonna do two pieces of painted paper. I'm gonna show you how to do the first one. So first of all, you're gonna get your piece of paper. You're gonna to need to write your name somewhere on the back so you can keep up with who's is who's. And we are going to do some watercolor resist. We're gonna be using oil pastels. So you're gonna get your chunky oil pastels and we're just gonna make shapes and lines on our piece of paper. They uh, don't, no coloring, just shapes or lines. So we could go from one side to the other and I'm gonna make a curvy line. You do whatever kind of lines you want. Yours don't have to look like mine. And then maybe I'll do a diagonal straight line like this. And I'm not coloring, I'm just drawing lines. And I'm gonna get a different color now and I'm gonna draw some shapes. So a shape is just when a line comes together and encloses itself. So what shape is that? That's a circle, right. Um, I'm gonna make a spiral line. This is just a line. And so all over your paper, I want you making different kinds of lines and shapes. This is abstract. It doesn't have to look like anything. We're just drawing lines and shapes all over. And these oil pastels are oily, so when we put our watercolor over it, you'll still be able to see the oil pastel. It'd be really pretty. So use lots of bright colors and that'll make this really fun. And just make whatever design your heart feels like making today, okay? Try to fill your paper from one side to the other so you don't have big places with lots of white space. You wanna have stuff everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna say that's good. Now we're going to be using our watercolor. So before we do that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about color. And I'm gonna move this out of the way for just a second. And everybody, every teacher has a color wheel that I've printed for you. And a color wheel is just how our colors are broken down. And this is a very basic one. We start out with our primary colors, which are yellow, blue, and red. Those are our three colors, and all of the other colors are made from them. So it's really neat. So blue and yellow make green, good. What do yellow and red make? Orange. And then blue and red make violet, or we also call violet purple. Either one of those is right. So also on the color wheel, your warm colors are over here, yellow, orange, and red. Those colors make us think of things that are warm, like the sun and fire. On this side of the color wheel, we have our cool colors, green, blue, and violet. Those make us think of things that are cool, like ice. All right, so another thing we're gonna talk about are analogous colors. 
Analogous colors are three colors that are touching on the color wheel. They're next to one another. So any three colors, it could be blue, violet, and red. It could be yellow, red, and orange. It could be blue, green, and yellow. So do you see what I'm doing? Any three that are touching. You're going to choose three analogous colors to paint onto your first piece of watercolor paper. So the reason we're doing analogous colors is because they will blend well together. If we let the students just start using all the colors, it could get muddied up really quick. So let them choose three analogous colors. I'm going to use yellow, orange, and red. Okay, so before I begin, I've got a container of water. I'm going to use a large brush <clears throat> and wet my paper all over. It will help the color flow better. We're just using regular liquid watercolors for this. Let me step over here and get a little bit smaller brush. Mine's a little big for sticking in the um, containers. So now I'm just, while this is wet, I'm gonna get some yellow and you see how I kind of drag it along the side so I don't have too much and I just kind of start painting. Then I rinse my brush, I drag it around the bottom. I get a lot of the water off by dragging it along the side. I'm gonna try to get a lot. I don't wanna water my colors down over here. And now I'm gonna get some orange. And because we wet that paper first, it's really making it flow good. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Every time you get new color, you have to rinse your brush. I'm gonna drag it along the side. You could also, I'm gonna get some paper towels. You can also have some paper towels nearby and let them dry their brush off that way. And then I'm gonna get some red. Just let them go all over painting this pretty painted paper. And you see how the oil pastel is coming through. It's resisting the watercolor. And I think I need a little more yellow. Okay, so when they get it how they like it, you're just going to put that somewhere on a drying rack and let it dry. So let me move this out of the way. <clears throat> Make sure their name is on it. Set that over here. I'm going to dry up my area. Now, you're also going to make another piece of painted paper. I've already cut mine into strips, but for your second piece of painted paper, ladies, teachers, um, this is what you're gonna do. This started out as a nine by 12 piece of watercolor paper, and we're going to this time use our neon tempera paint for this, okay? So not watercolor, tempera. So you're gonna let them, so for example, if they did warm colors for their um, first one, then they need to do cool colors for this second one or vice versa because it will contrast nicely. So I did warm colors. So now I chose green and blue, neon tempera. I squirted some on there. As the teacher, you would squirt a few dots of each, let them, spread it with a paintbrush, and then use texture tools to go in and create texture, okay? And then you will let that dry. Now, I wanted to show you one other thing, teachers. You can do this if you want, you don't have to. To add a little extra vibrancy to these painted papers, I went back using some neon, you could either use neon tempera or neon watercolor, and I made some flecks. And I made warm flecks on the cool paper to make it really stand out. And you see here on my dried piece of this, I made some neon blue flecks. And the way that you do that is, you let this dry a little bit. It doesn't have to be all the way dry. You take a brush, dip it in the paint, and let the students use their finger and they flick it like that. It can be a little messy. That's why this is an optional thing for you to do. You can do it if you want. I will say it makes some really pretty, um, added things on this paint and paper if that is what you want to do and if you have time to do that and if you have an area that is good for that. All right, so after you have gotten two pieces of painted paper from every student, you'll need to somehow paper clip this together, write a name on it so you know whose is whose because you're gonna cut it into strips, teachers. You're going to use your paper cutter and cut it into one and a half inch strips. Now, I'm gonna explain something because the one that I'm about to do is gonna look a little different than this one. So for this one, I cut my strips going vertically so they were short strips. 
on this one, I cut my strips horizontally and made long strips. So it really doesn't matter if you make the short strips, you're gonna have an even edge. If you make long strips, you're going to have an edge that hangs off, which can be really pretty and you're gonna see in a minute. So you may wanna do some one way, some the other way. You may like one way better and wanna do all of yours th that way. That is your option. All right, so after you've got all that done, you're gonna come back with the original um, piece of watercolor resist paper and teachers, it may be good if you do this part and prepare these for your students before they come to class. Um, you need to decide about that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your paper like this vertically, the long side going up and down. You're gonna flip it over and fold it in half. We're making the loom for our weaving. So with the folded side on the bottom, teachers, you can do this if you want. You're gonna come in, I give about two finger spaces, and you're gonna cut a straight line that goes up, but not all the way to the edge. And you don't have to use a ruler. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfectly measured. Just kind of eyeball it. If you feel like some of your students can do this responsibly, then you can let them do it. But some of your students may need help cutting their lines just to make sure we get this right. Okay, so then when you open it, you're going to have these horizontal strips. So now I'm gonna turn it back this way and I'm gonna start weaving. So now remember, I cut these strips long horizontally, so they're gonna hang off. So you're going to show the students how to start weaving. So it doesn't matter if you start on the top or the bottom, I'm gonna start on the top and I'm going from the right to the left side. You could go the other way, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go over this strip, and then I'm gonna go under this strip. Over this strip, under the next. You're just doing the opposite on every one. Over, under, and then you come out over, and you slide it up. Now, you see how it hangs off. That's gonna be really pretty. I can mount that on some paper and mat it. It'd be really pretty. So, I kinda like it like that. Now, the good thing about it is if they mess up, you haven't glued anything yet, so they can just pull it out. So I like to wait to glue to the end. When you start your next strip, you start it over. So this time you would do the opposite. You start under and you go over. You have to kind of lift those up, under, over, under, over, under and if like I said if a child says oops I miss messed up just let them pull it out and try again all right so you just slide it up every time and you kind of see you get the hang of what we're doing here just opposite of what you did from the one above it teachers you'll just kind of have to walk around and make sure they're understanding slide it up and like I said I like to wait until I'm finished to glue so you see how that's looking I love the contrast of the cool and the warm colors that's why I said to use the opposite on the other. And I really do like how that looks hanging off. So once they're finished going all the way down, you may not get to fit all of these on there, that's okay. You need to let the students go back and glue the edges. So every for every strip where it ends, I would put a dot of glue here and a dot of glue here. You just need a dot. A dot of glue here and a dot of glue there. On the, so it would be on the back and just glue it down so it can't be pulled out. You may need to, I would recommend that after you get these glued and so they're not gonna stick to each other, if you stick a whole bunch of children's together before the glue's dry, you could you could mess it up and make them stick. After they've dried, if they're kind of really wrinkly, put some heavy um, packs of paper or books or something on them and flatten them back out. So you see the two choices you have. It really just depends on how you cut your paper and that's gonna be up to you as a teacher but I cannot wait to see how these turn out. I think your students are gonna have a lot of fun doing them, and I will see you next time. Bye.